Hi Grant, I hope you can help me because I feel my question is very tricky. I'll do my best. So right now my goal is to kind of be good at everything. I want to be flexible, I want to have a strong core, body and tone lean muscle. I also want to be fit, have the ability to walk up a flight of stairs without being out of breath. So what you're referring to is actually something called GPP. And that simply stands for General Physical Preparedness, which is meaning just you kind of a little bit good-ish at everything. So sort of what you mentioned here. So you've got a good sort of general base of flexibility, a good general base of strength, good general base of fitness. Now you won't be an elite level powerlifter in terms of their strength or super fit like a marathon runner or really flexible like a yoga instructor. You just have a good sort of average base. And again, it's called GPP. I can only realistically get to the gym three times per week. She's got in brackets. I'm a full-time working mum of three. How could I go about achieving this? Would I dedicate one day to fitness, one day to strength, one day to flexibility, or would I try and squeeze it all in the one workout? I'm afraid that'll take too long though. Thank you. Question sent through from Jade. So the very first thing is no, I would not dedicate just one day to flexibility work, one day to strength, and one day to fitness. Because if you follow that sort of uh, system, for the entire year. At the end of the year, we tally up the numbers. That's only 52 workouts for your flexibility, 52 for your strength, and 52 for your fitness. It's just simply not enough. Instead, I would try and squeeze it all into the one workout. That way, we do that three times per week, and at the end of the year, we tally up the numbers. You've worked on your flexibility, strength, and fitness 156 times. 156 workouts is far better than just 52. So, how though? How can we squeeze all this stuff into one workout and not blow it out to a two hour long workout? So whenever I think of time efficient stuff, I always come back to a question I learned from Dan John, super smart strength coach in the States. He says, if you only have 15 minutes to work on X, what would you do? Now, the 15 minute part, in terms of if you actually follow that to a T, is not what we're going for. But the reason why this question is so powerful is because it gets rid of all the fluff. And I'll show you what I mean by this in a second. So what we're gonna do is I'll show you sort of what I would do if I were you. So the goal right now here is to work on GPP. So this triangle here is gonna represent your the timeline of your workout. The first, or the bottom line here is the first 20 minutes of your workout, here's the next 20 minutes of your workout, here's the next 20 minutes. So we've got a 60 minute workout. So for the first 20 minutes of your workout, here's where I'll be working on your mobility, your core, and then I'll tag on like a little five minutes at the end to work to do some warm up sets for the next phase of the triangle. So there's your first 20 minutes of your workout. Now, the next 20 minutes of your workout is where you're gonna work, work on your strength. Now, it's called strength, and as Andrew Reid says, it's called strength and conditioning for a reason. Strength comes first, conditioning comes second. Don't do your conditioning work or your fitness work first because it's gonna zap all your strength and then you can't be strong for when you need to be strong. So do your strength first, then work on your fitness later, which is the final 20 minutes of your workout. So here's sort of the three main goals that we'll work on here. So in the beginning, we're gonna work on that mobility, the flexibility, and some of the core, and then we're gonna do some strength work, and then we're gonna finish off with some fitness. So there's your 60 minute workout. Now, specifically though, this is still quite time restricted. So you've only really got about probably 10 minutes here, five minutes here, and five minutes here. So, you only got 10 minutes to work on your mobility. What would you do? Well, you'd probably work on your most problematic areas. Now, I don't know what they are, but I've found working with lots of people here in my gym is the three most problematic areas for people is their thoracic, their hip mobility, and their ankle mobility. So I would simply just take one exercise that works on each and rot rotate through that in the circuit fashion, spending you know, like 30 seconds or a minute on each exercise until 10 minutes is up. And then next up is then you're gonna spend about probably five minutes on your core. 
If you Google Grant Lofthouse core training, it goes into, you'll find a video that goes into great depth talking about the sort of the four main movements for core. And just very quickly, we've got flexion base, we've got anti-extension, we've got anti-rotation, and then anti-lateral flexion. They're sort of the four main movements. Again, Google Grant Lofthouse core training, that video will pop up, show you how to sort of do that sort of stuff. But I would just dedicate one day to one. So like for example, Monday I'll do a flexion based exercise, Wednesday anti-extension, Friday anti-rotation, week two on Monday, anti-lateral flexion, and then on the Wednesday of week two, go back to flexion and keep rotating through them each workout. Then the last five minutes of sort of the first 20 minutes is I would just be doing like, you know, three to five um, specific warm up sets for your strength work. So you've got 20 minutes to work on your strength what would you do? Probably not bicep curls and tricep kickbacks. A good idea maybe would be to do one lower body exercise, like a squat or a deadlift, one upper body pushing exercise, like a bench press, military press, push-ups, one upper body pulling exercise, like a chin-up or a row. You could set that up in a circuit fashion. If you Google Grant Lofthouse strength training, a bunch of videos should pop up talking about how to specifically get stronger with different set and rep schemes and whatnot. But again, you could do that for the next 20 minutes. And then the last 20 minutes of your workout is the huffing and puffing stuff. So you can do some hit stuff. So you can do sled drags, one minute on, one minute off until 20 minutes is up, that's 10, sled, 10 sets of sled drags, and that'll smoke you out. You can do skipping, like jump rope, 30 seconds on, 30 seconds off, until 20 minutes is up. If it worked for boxes, it'll probably work for you. Um, medicine ball slams, you can do, you know, just some sprint work. Um, 15 seconds of sprints, 45 seconds of rest, repeat, 20 minutes is up. But if you follow this template, I think it's a pretty good start to go for increasing your GPP, you're doing this three times per week at the end of the year, 156 workouts, work, focusing on some mobility, some strength and some fitness. And that's probably the best way you could tackle this issue without, again, blowing it out into a two, a, a two hour long workout. So look, I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making this for you. Now look, if you'd like to have more conversations just like this or ask me a question, then I've got a free Facebook group. It's called Girls Who Lift With Grant. If you just search that name in Facebook, the group should pop up. Request to join, I'll send you on the inside. Apart from that, thank you for watching and I'll talk to you soon.